Hi, I'm Claire, and this is my to be read pile for next week's Booktubeathon. As you may know, the Booktubeathon is a week long readathon that was started by YouTuber Ariel Bissett. I will leave a link to the Booktubeathon YouTube channel in the description box below. If you want to know more about the event, then I would definitely recommend checking out the videos on that channel. As I mentioned in my recent life update video, there have been a lot of things going on with me the past few months and that has kind of led into a bit of a reading slump. I've been reading comics steadily over the past few months but number of actual novels I finished has been fairly low. So I wanted to take advantage of the booktubeathon to get back into the swing of things a little bit. With that in mind I've picked a different book for every single challenge even though most of these books fit into more than one of the challenge categories and even though I know that is an extremely ambitious number because I do not usually read seven different things in a week. But I can always finish stuff on my holiday the week after, so it's all good. The first challenge was to read a book with a person on the cover, and for this one I have chosen The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. This is a Regency romance novel about two young aristocratic men who go on their grand tour of Europe together and have to deal with adventures and shenanigans and also realizing that they really like each other. I have been waiting for this book for so long. I had it on my most anticipated releases of 2017 video. I pre-ordered it for my Kindle ages before it actually came out. It came out the other week. I'm really genuinely surprised that I haven't picked it up yet because I think once I pick it up I will completely inhale it. I think this will be a really quick read so it fits for the readathon. Now that I know a readathon is coming I am saving it for that week. Obviously now that I've decided I need to wait I want to read it right this second immediately because my brain is contrary. It does have a person on the cover. I'm not actually all that fond of the cover for this but it definitely fits the bill for this challenge. The second challenge is to read a hyped book and for this I've gone with Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. But hang on Claire, I hear you say, isn't this book just massive and um, yes it is, it is over 500 pages indeed but I think this is gonna be another one that reads it really really quickly just from what I've heard other people say and from my experience reading other books by Rainbow Rowell. This is a YA fantasy story about Simon Snow who is a hero but he's not that good at being a hero and he goes to wizard school. You've probably heard of this book because it is the novel that Kath, the main character of Fangirl, also by Rainbow Rowell, writes fan fiction about. I'm definitely counting this as a hyped book because even before it came out, when it was first announced, there was so much talk around what it means that a book that's basically original fiction about which fan fiction is written in another book about a fangirl, what does it mean in terms of fan fiction and original fiction? How does that relationship shift? What does it mean for YA literature in general that so many authors are coming in now writing original YA fiction who have had experience writing fan fiction before, the influence of Harry Potter fandom on this book which is also huge. Um, so yes, I think this will be really interesting and now I can have an opinion on the book as well as having an opinion on what counts and doesn't count as fan fiction. Challenge number three is to finish a book in one day and for this one I've chosen Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shauna McGuire. This is a novella which is a kind of sequel that's not quite a continuation but set in the same world as her novella Every Heart a Doorway which was one of my favorite books of last year. Down Among the Sticks and Bones actually came out a few days ago at the time that I'm recording this and I have a pre-order that's somehow not arriving for another week so that's a little bit annoying but I should have the book 
by the time the readathon starts, which is uh, all that I really care about. And it's a novella, it's quite short. I should be able to read it in one day, especially since I loved Every Heart a Doorway so, so much. If you haven't read it, it's about a boarding school for children and teenagers who have been to fantastical, magical worlds like Narnia or Fairyland or a myriad of other magical, fantastic places and have had magical, fantastic adventures there and then have come back to Earth and don't really know what to do with themselves and their parents don't really know what to do with them. They all end up at Eleanor West's home for wayward children and in the first book we have a bunch of grisly murders happening there. And as I've mentioned, the second book isn't quite a continuation. It's about two of the characters in the first book and the adventures that they had when they were originally in their fantastical land. The fourth challenge is to read about someone completely different from yourself and for this I am super excited to finally, finally read The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. If you watch any amount of booktube you probably have heard about this one already. This is a novel about a young African-American uh, teenage girl in the US who witnesses the death of a friend of hers who is a young black man who is shot by a white police officer at a traffic stop when they are leaving a party. And the novel is obviously about the fallout from this event and what star the main character decides to do after this and how people around her react to it as well because she goes to a mostly white school in a posh neighborhood but she lives in a more rundown area that has a more ethnically diverse population. It just sounds like it's going to be so so interesting. I have not really heard anything bad about this book and actually I've heard a lot of people talking about how great all the different perspectives in this book are and how it shows the complexities of the issues at hand and it's not just like here's a good guy and here's a bad guy so I'm really really looking forward to it and again it's like over 400 pages but I think it will be a quick read just from what everybody's been saying about it it seems like it's not something you can put down once you've started it. Challenge number five is to read a book completely outdoors. And given the vagaries of the British weather, I have chosen a comic book for this. I'm going to be reading Descender Volume 4, Orbital Mechanics, written by Jeff Lemire and illustrated by Dustin and Green. This is one of my favorite comic book series that I'm reading at the moment. This is the latest volume. It's been out for a little bit, but I've only picked it up recently at my comic book store. And I am saving it for the readathon because short books and comics are always good <laughs> when you're doing uh, any kind of a readathon and I can't wait to see what happens to everyone in this volume because as I've mentioned I really really love this series and also it's one that's uh, really really good at just hooking you in with the characters and their stories not to mention of course the gorgeous gorgeous art now I don't want to look at the pages too closely because I don't want to spoil myself but it has this really really gorgeous um, watercolor style that I really really love. Challenge number six was to read a book you bought just because of the cover and I actually had a lot of trouble coming up with a book for this because most of the things that I buy even if I look at it and I think the cover is really really great I will have another reason for buying it as well like I really like this author or I've heard really good things about it but I did remember recently going to one of my favorite bookshops in North London the Big Green Bookshop and looking just at the table of books and I picked this up from the table. This is Sawbones by Katherine Johnson and this is definitely something I picked up first because of the cover and the title. It is indeed a book that is about Victorian medicine and grave robbing and crime solving. All of these things are things that I deeply deeply enjoy so I thought I would give it a go. I can't tell for sure if it's middle grade or young adult just from the blurb in the back but it is only 220 or so pages and the writing in the book is 
kind of big-ish, so I'm going to assume middle grade, but I might well be wrong. And the final challenge is to read seven books during Booktubeathon, and that's the challenge I think I'm most likely to fail, because I don't usually read seven things in a week. I know some people do, but it's just not the amount of stuff that I usually get through in a week. So for this final challenge, I've picked another comic book, so that if I read all of the other books that I've mentioned, I only need this one little comic to finish up the week. This is Clean Room Volume 2 Exile. It is written by Gail Simone and illustrated by John Davis Hunt and I was given the first volume of this as a birthday present last year and I really really enjoyed it so I thought I'd pick up Volume 2 and continue the story. This is a dark fantasy horror uh, story about a cult leader and uh, all the bad things that are happening around this cult and around this woman who is leading the cult. Our protagonist is a journalist who is trying to expose this cult leader and the story is about all the things that she finds when she starts digging into the cult and there's also some demon beasties going on in the background as well for the fantasy element of the story. I just really enjoyed the creepy atmosphere when I was reading this and I also really like stories about cult so it was a good pick for me in the first place. So that's it, those are the books, most of the books that I'm planning to read for uh, this booktubeathon. Let me know in the comments below if you are participating in booktubeathon and if you have anything that you specifically want to read for the booktubeathon. I always really really enjoy watching people's TBR videos so if you've made one of these videos let me know in the comments and I'll uh, probably give it a look. If you'd like to see more from me you can check out a recent video right about here here and if you haven't yet please hit that subscribe button that's on my face right here for more videos from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching and see you soon. This definitely doesn't count as fan fiction, it's original fiction! I have many many thoughts about this.